With the invention of technologies such as a steam engine and mechanized textile factories, the Industrial Revolution ushered in a shift from the rural handicraft economy to an urban manufacturing one. As people increasingly moved towards urban centers in order to find work, a disconnect grew between people and the nature they had previously been so closely tied to. The adverse effects on the environment were usually seen to be localized and short-lived, and accepted as an inevitable cost of progress to be dealt with only when there was a clear and immediate threat to life and livelihoods. People had more pressing priorities than the concern about the environment, particularly at a time when its ability to supply goods and services and its capacity for absorbing waste and pollution seemed limitless. Nature, while occasionally needing our protection in badly polluted areas, was felt to be robust and bountiful enough to be managed, tamed, and exploited as we wished. Yet we now live in an age where current rates of extinction are unparalleled since the mass extinction of dinosaurs 65 million years ago. According to Joby Warwick of the Washington Post, 60% of the laymen polled in America profess little or no familiarity with the concept of biological diversity, and barely half rank species loss as a major threat. Technological changes have affected our relationship to the environment. Technology is a tool by which we preserve, conserve, and exploit natural resources. Increasingly sophisticated and powerful, technology enables us to control or condition more and more aspects of the environment. It also allows us to protect and distance ourselves from nature. Ultimately, the ways that we use technology for such purposes and its role as a driving force for environmental change are very much influenced by our individual and collective views of the environment. Today's deep ecologists seem to regard technology as an evil force, something alien to the natural world. These new technologies are not granted the respect we accord to natural processes, but rather as something wrong, something to be controlled and repressed. Deep ecologists seem to have the same fear and loathing towards today's out-of-control technology as humans have had until just recently towards uncontrolled nature. They call technology inhuman, cruel, and heartless, using the same words we once used to describe the cruel wilderness. And yet even as these deep ecologists view technology as an evil force that can do nothing but harm the planet, there is a new trend emerging in the scientific world. They say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And if this is the case, then biomimicry is evidence of a shift back towards a reverence and a respect for nature. Biomimicry or biomimetics literally meaning imitation of life, uses nature for inspiration in solving human problems. The core idea is that nature, imaginative by necessity, has already solved many of the problems we are grappling with. Animals, plants, and microbes are the consummate engineers. They have found what works, what is appropriate, and most importantly, what lasts here on Earth. After 3.8 billion years of evolution, the failures are left as fossils, and what surrounds us is a secret to survival. Those who use biomimicry in their fields feel that it will lead to a sustainable future here on Earth, one in which we once again look to nature as one large integrated web. The more our world looks and functions like the natural world, the more likely we are to endure on this home that is ours, but not ours alone. Nature can be used as a model, a standard of measure, or as a mentor, but its laws and strategies and principles remain constant. While there are more than 1,200 different ways that biomimicry is currently being used around the world, I have chosen to highlight 10 that I find to be particularly relevant. Perhaps one of the most famous examples of biomimicry is Velcro, invented by a Swiss engineer who noticed how tightly burrs clung to his dog's hair. He structured it so that one side is composed of microscopic hooks that mimic the burr, while the other side consists of loose weaved nylon to which the hooks can grab a hold. Architectural design in Zimbabwe has learned how to keep temperature inside buildings constant from termites. The insects do this by constantly opening and closing vents throughout the mound to manage convection air currents. Cooler air is drawn from open lower sections, while hot air escapes through chimneys. The bionic car developed by Mercedes-Benz makes use of the streamlined shape of the tropical boxfish. Its aerodynamic shape has been shown to require 20% less fuel consumption and produce 80% less nitrogen oxide emissions. Seen for the first time at the Beijing Olympics, scientists have mimicked the varying shape and texture of shark skin to produce swimsuits that help produce drag. The same technology can be used for ships' hulls, submarines, and aircraft fuselage. 
Plant-inspired solar cells are capable of carrying out artificial photosynthesis, thereby capturing the sun's energy much more cheaply and with far less toxic building materials than traditional solar panels. It is believed that these cells will also be able to be incorporated into a range of materials, including glass, building paints, and textiles, rather than being limited to rigid solar panels. After the book The Da Vinci Code, many people are familiar with the Fibonacci sequence, logarithmic spirals, and the golden ratio. One company has been developing air and fluid movement technologies using these natural reoccurring designs. The streamlining principle is being applied to fans, mixers, and impellers that move air and liquid around in systems. It's believed that this technology could save at least 15% of all the electricity consumed in the U.S. Inspired by the ridges on the flippers of humpback whales, whale power has developed turbine blades that allow for greater efficiency in applications from wind turbines to hydroelectric turbines to irrigation pumps to ventilation fans. Its 20% increase in efficiency will help to make wind power fully competitive with other alternatives. The Shinkansen bullet train in Japan has a nose design like a beak of a kingfisher. This solved the original design problem in which the train would produce an extremely loud bang every time it emerged from a tunnel. It also helped the train to go even faster, reaching speeds of greater than 200 miles per hour, as well as it helps it to use less energy. Geckos have the ability to climb vertical surfaces and even upside down. Mimicking the citae on the bottom of the lizard's feet, gecko tape is an adhesive which uses weak intramolecular attractive forces to be super sticky at one moment and not at all the next. While there are many potential uses for this product, it is only currently being used in the construction of gecko robots to demonstrate the tape's abilities. Morpho butterflies remain vibrant blue throughout their lives without ever needing a coat of paint to spruce up a dull finish. The scales on their wings are made of many layers of protein that refract light in different ways and the color we see is due to the play of light rather than the presence of pigments. A company in Japan is producing Morphotex fibers in which no dyes or pigments are used. This has the potential to lead to paints and materials in which energy consumption and industrial wastes are reduced because no dye processes must be used. Biomimicry allows a disconnect between technology and nature to be bridged, and it paves the way to a sustainable future. To learn more about these fascinating technologies, please visit www.biomimicryinstitute.org.